and welcome to a new episode of the Pennook. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about brass and copper fountain pens if you're thinking about getting one for yourself. You see, brass and copper are very particular materials in the fountain pen world and they have some properties that make them either uh, attractive or, or not to some people. So this video is going to be a little, a little heads up, sorry, just to give you some of the information you may not know and it's going to guide you in your process of maybe buying one of these for yourself or as a gift. And to help me in this video, I'm going to be using some pens in different materials and models. So to my right, we have the Caveco Sport line, we have a brass model, an aluminum model, and a plastic model to give you some weight um, indications, comparisons between these pens. So maybe you have one of these and you're thinking about the brass version. So we're going to be comparing these to give you an idea about what makes the brass one different. To my left, we have the Keras Customs uh, ink fountain pens. We have again aluminum, but this time we have copper and brass. And as you're going to discover, copper and brass are very similar because, well, brass is actually a copper alloy. So again, these three pens are going to help us give some examples and some illustrations on how copper and brass pens compare to plastic and aluminum ones that you're probably more familiar with. Now, keep in mind that today's video is going to be focused on raw, alum uh, sorry, raw brass and raw copper pens, which means that the metal is exposed to the atmosphere, to your hands, to water, to ink, air, and all that stuff. So we're not going to be covering pens like this Pilot Vanishing Point, which is actually made out of brass, like the whole body is brass, but it's covered in a lacquer or some type of paint, which protects the brass from the environment. So some, I mean, many of the properties of raw copper and raw brass pens won't apply to these types of pens. So we will not be covering them. All right, so first things first, you probably heard it somewhere. People say that brass and copper pens are heavy, very heavy. And well, it's true. Well, especially if you compare them to aluminum and plastic. So just to give you some idea, if we take a copper pen, well, copper has a density of about nine grams per cubic centimeter. Brass is an alloy of copper. So it's about two thirds copper and one third zinc. And well, zinc has a density of around um, 7.1 grams per cubic centimeter. So when you mix one third of seven grams per cubic centimeter with two thirds uh, copper, well, of course, you still get a very heavy pen. In comparison, aluminum is about 2.7 grams. So it's much lighter when you make a pen out of these materials. And to give you another reference point, ABS. So ABS is uh, what is used for, for example, your good old uh, Lamy Safari. That's just 1.05 grams per cubic centimeter. So about nine times lighter than copper for the same volume. So yeah, that's great. We have plenty of numbers, but how does that translate in reality, you know, in real uh, pen experience? Well, let me bring out the scale and we're gonna compare these pens to give you a real comprehension of what all those numbers mean. All right, so let's start by comparing the weight of our three Caveco fountain pens here. If we start with the plastic version, I'm not sure what type of resin or plastic they use, but it's going to be a good reference point since these are very popular and many people have them around. So the plastic version is uh, 9.45 grams. Pretty light pen. If we go with the aluminum, anodized aluminum, we have 19.32. So about double the, the weight. Keep in mind, all of these pens are uninked, right? And the brass version is 41 point, sorry, 41.57 grams, so much heavier. The same can be observed with the Keras fountain pens. Of course, this time we're going to be comparing um, aluminum to brass and copper instead of aluminum, uh, brass and plastic. So if we start with the anodized aluminum version, we have a weight of 37.76. And then the brass we have 112.33 grams, 35 grams. Wow, this is, a, this is a big, heavy, extremely heavy pen. And actually the only thing I know 
that is heavier than, than this, as far as fountain pens go, is the copper version, which is slightly heavier at 112.58, but they're very, very close in weight because like I said, um, brass is mostly made out of copper. So I hope this, these uh, little comparisons helped you have a better grasp of what the density of copper really means as far as the weight of pens go. So when people say that brass and copper pens are heavy, well, they really are in comparison to other pens. And for some people, that, that extreme difference in weight can be a big no-no as far as fountain pens go. So if you think that the weight of a pen might um, make you like or hate this pen, definitely, definitely try to um, test one of these pens before buying because it's different it's different it's sorry <laughs> it's difficult to understand just how heavy these are before actually um, using one so as the first point the weight of the brass and copper pens is a main characteristic of these pens all right the second point i want to cover is patina so copper and therefore brass has a particular property where instead of rusting like steel would it develops a patina. It's a form of oxidation that forms a protective layer on the metal and protects uh, either the copper or brass from further degradation due to oxidation. So this is very easy to see on these pens. Um, you see they're kind of brown, tarnished, kind of golden color instead of the bright, um, um, shiny color of brass that is freshly polished. Same goes for copper. When copper is freshly polished, it looks kind of orange and brilliant. When it patinas, like this one, it forms an, a thin oxide layer that looks more dark brown. And this is something that all copper and fountain pen will um, have, unless they're coated with something like a varnish or a lacquer or something like that. So if you like um, a lot the look of polished brass and copper and you want to buy such a pen for that purpose only, keep in mind that it will start to patina over time, unless that is, you polish it constantly with something like a polishing cloth. These cloths are often included with such pens, but keep in mind that it is a time consuming process. So if you really, really like the look of um, shiny brass and copper, maybe try to get a version that is uh, protected from the air, the atmosphere, water, and stuff like that. So you don't have to constantly polish it. In my case, and in many people's case, um, I love the, the patina that, that uh, grows, develops on the pen. And it is unique for every person because this is actually a reaction from, uh, sorry, a reaction between the metal and the oils and humidity in the air and on your hands. So depending on how you hold onto the pen, the patina is going to have a different pattern from pen to pen and from person to person. Um, so I think it gives the pen a very nice uh, antique look, a very warm look, and I really love patina, but if it's something you don't like, just keep in mind that it will happen on your brass and copper pen if they are raw um, metal pens. All right, next thing I want to cover is the smell associated with brass and copper pens. If you have ever handled change or metallic parts, and then your hands smell like, well, pennies or you know that typical metallic smell and that you hate that smell well maybe you don't get one of these pens because well they smell just like that just like change and that is because of a reaction between chemical compounds in your hands and the metal of the pen and it creates that smell that is so characteristic with metal and i know some people like for example sia they hate that smell i really don't mind but if you really hate the smell of change and metal well, maybe you don't get one of these because your hands are going to smell like that all the time after you use them and during uh, the time you use them. The, pen, the pens themselves will also smell like that. And it's quite a strong smell. So if you think, you, you know, just keep that in mind. All right, the final point I want to make is that brass and copper pens should really not be eye-dropped. So as you know, eye-dropping is uh, not using the cartridge in a pen, but rather filling the whole body of the pen with ink. Like you would just fill this whole body with ink instead of using a cartridge. And this is something that is pretty, pretty practical and easy to do on some plastic pens, like for example, the plastic version of the Quebec Sport, but cannot and should not be done on the 
brass and copper pens. There's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, you're, you don't know about the compounds in the ink and it could very well have a reaction with the brass and copper and degrade your pen. It could damage the, the metal of the pen because metals tend to be more reactive than resins, really. Also, um, you can have the formation of uh, copper oxide, which is um, not very good for you. Like I said, um, brass contains a lot, a lot of copper, so this is true for both pens, both types of pens, brass and copper. You can have the formation of copper oxide, which is um, pretty nasty stuff. You know, it can cause irritation on your skin, your eyes, and if ingested, it is toxic. So, I mean, just don't eye drop your <laughs> copper and brass pens. So, with all of that in mind, if you don't like, or actually, if you like to, to have a heavy pen, if you like the patina, if you don't plan on eye dropping the pen, and don't mind the smell of the metal, by all means, get one of these. They're amazing. I really like the heavy construction, the heavy feel to them. They're, they're amazing. They're, they're great pens, great materials. They age very beautifully, both um, copper and brass. But like I mentioned, I wanted to make this video just to make sure that people won't go out spending a couple hundred dollars on a, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be that much. Just spend a hundred dollars on a brass pen and then realize they hate uh, either the weight, the smell, or all of that stuff. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this is gonna help you decide if you want or don't want a brass or copper pen. Um, if you like this video, uh, make sure to subscribe. We have plenty more coming. And also you can follow us on Instagram if you fancy that type of things. So until next time, have a great day and see you on the pen nook.